chapter of the thoracic spine is kyphosis, also called hunchback. An abnormal curve from side to side is called scoliosis. Vertebrae are the 33 individual bones that interlock with each other to form the spinal column. The vertebrae are numbered and divided into regions, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacrum, and coccyx, fig 2. Only the top 24 bones are movable. The vertebrae of the sacrum and coccyx are fused. The vertebrae in each region have unique features that help them perform their main functions. Cervical, neck, as the main function of the cervical spine is to support the weight of the head, about 10 pounds. The seven cervical vertebrae are numbered C1 to C7. The neck has the greatest range of motion because of two specialized vertebrae that connect to the skull. The first vertebra, C1, is the ring-shaped atlas that connects directly to the skull. This joint allows for the nodding or yes motion of the head. The second vertebra, C2, is the peg-shaped axis, which has a projection called the odontoid that the atlas pivots around. This joint allows for the side-to-side -side or no motion of the head. Thoracic, mid-back, as the main function of the thoracic spine is to hold the ribcage and protect the heart and lungs. The 12 thoracic vertebrae are numbered T1 to T12. The range of motion in the thoracic spine is limited. Lumbar, low back, as the main function of the lumbar spine is to bear the weight of the body. The five lumbar vertebrae are numbered L1 to L5. These vertebrae are much larger in size to absorb the stress of lifting and carrying heavy objects. Sacrum are the main function of the sacrum is to connect the spine to the hip bones, iliac. There are five sacral vertebrae, which are fused together. Together with the iliac bones, they form a ring called the pelvic girdle. Coccyx region at the four fused bones of the coccyx or tailbone provide attachment for ligaments and muscles of the pelvic floor. While vertebrae have unique regional features, every vertebra has three functional parts. A, a drum-shaped body designed to bear weight and withstand compression and arch-shaped bone that protects the spinal cord. Star-shaped processes designed as outriggers for muscle attachment. Intervertebral discs. Each vertebra in your spine is separated and cushioned by an intervertebral disc, which keeps the bones from rubbing together. Discs are designed like a radial car tire. The outer ring, called the annulus, has crisscrossing fibrous bands, much like a tire tread. These bands attach between the bodies of each vertebra. Inside the disc is a gel-filled center called the nucleus, much like a tire tube. Discs function like coiled springs. The crisscrossing fibers of the annulus pull the vertebral bones together against the elastic resistance of the gel-filled nucleus. The nucleus acts like a ball bearing when you move, allowing the vertebral bodies to roll over the incompressible gel. The gel-filled nucleus contains mostly fluid. This fluid is absorbed during the night as you lie down and is pushed out during the day as you move upright. With age, our discs increasingly lose the ability to reabsorb fluid and become brittle and flatter. This is when we get shorter as we grow older. Also diseases, such as osteoarthritis and osteoporosis, Cause bone spurs, osteophytes, to grow. Injury and strain can cause discs to bulge or herniate, a condition in which the nucleus is pushed up through the annulus to compress the nerve roots causing back pain. Vertebral arch and spinal canal. On the back of each vertebra are bony projections that form the vertebral arch. The arch is made of two supporting pedicles and two laminae. 
The hollow spinal canal contains the spinal cord, fat, ligaments, and blood vessels. Under each pedicle, a pair of spinal nerves exits the spinal cord and pass through the intervertebral foramen to branch out to your body. Surgeons often remove the lamina at the vertebral arch, laminectomy, to access the spinal cord and nerves to treat stenosis, tumors, or herniated discs. Seven processes arise from the vertebral arch, the spinous process, two transverse processes, two superior facets, and two inferior facets, facet joints. The facet joints of the spine allow back motion. Each vertebra had four facet joints, one pair that connects to the vertebra above, superior facets, and one pair that connects to the vertebra below, inferior facets. Thirty-one pairs of spinal nerves branch off the spinal cord. The spinal nerves act as telephone lines, carrying messages back and forth between your body and spinal cord to control sensation and movement. Each spinal nerve has two roots. The ventral, front, root carries motor impulses off from the brain in the dorsal, back, root carries sensory impulses at toe the brain. The ventral and dorsal roots fuse together to form a spinal nerve, which travels down the spinal canal, alongside the cord, until it reaches its exit hole, the intervertebral foramen. Once the nerve passes through the intervertebral foramen, it branches. Each branch has both motor and sensory fibers. The smaller branch, called the posterior primary ramus turns posteriorly to supply the skin and muscles of the back of the body. The larger branch, called the anterior primary ramus, turns anteriorly to supply the skin and muscles of the front of the body and forms most of the major nerves. The spinal nerves are numbered according to the vertebrae above which it exits the spinal canal. The eight cervical spinal nerves are C1 through C8. The 12 thoracic spinal nerves are T1 through T12. The 5 lumbar spinal nerves are L1 through L5. And the 5 sacral spinal nerves are S1 through S5. There is one cochegeal nerve. The spinal nerves innerve at specific areas and form a striped pattern across the body called dermatomes. Doctors use this pattern to diagnose the location of a spinal problem based on the area of pain or muscle weakness. For example leg pain, sciatica, usually indicates a problem near the L4S3 nerves. The spinal cord is covered with the same three membranes as the brain, called meninges. The inner membrane is the pia mater, which is intimately attached to the cord. The next membrane is the arachnoid mater. The outer membrane is the tough dura mater. Between these membranes are spaces used in diagnostic and treatment procedures. The space between the pea and arachnoid mater is the white subarachnoid space, which surrounds the spinal cord and contains cerebrospinal fluid, CSF. This space is most often accessed when performing a lumbar puncture to sample and test CSF or during a myelogramma to inject contrast dye. The space between the dura mater and the bone is the epidural space. This space is most often accessed to deliver anesthetic numbing agents, commonly called an epidural and to inject steroid medication. The neural tissue is a specialized tissue with some specialized functions. It is the main component of the nervous system a euro, both the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. This includes the brain, spinal cord, and other types of nerves. In two words, if we have to describe the functions of the neural tissue, we can specify that integration and communication are the main functions of this specialized tissue.
The neural tissue consists of mainly the neurons in the neuroglia. The neurons or the nerve cells are highly specialized cells that have the ability to generate and also conduct nerved impulses. There are supporting cells in the form of neuroglia that help remove the debris, give physical support along with providing electrical insulation. The neuron is the basic unit of the neural system. It has a cell body, dendrites, axons and axon terminals. Dendrites and axons are the slender processes. This cell body and the neuron contains a nucleus rough endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, etc. The acella body of the neuron carries out the basic life processes of the neuron. It is the biosynthetic center of the neuron. The dendrites are a type of motor neurons that have a large surface area. They are also short in length. The dendrites have a large area so as to receive signals from the other neurons. The incoming message is conveyed by the dendrite to the cell body. Therefore, they are called the receptive input region. This cell body has a cone-shaped region, from where the axon arises. Axons are very long and thin. They are more wire-like and can go up to several feet. This design of the axon helps in the reliable and quick transmission of information. The main function of the axon is to conduct the signals. It is mainly responsible for the generation and transmission of impulses away from the cell body. The axon routes the nerved impulses from the cell body to other neurons or an effector organ. The axons can also have many terminal branches. The axon terminals that are present at the end of the axons are connected to other neurons. Types of neurons Based on the functionality, the neurons are classified into three types. They are Sensory neurons or afferent neurons transmit information from the peripheral nervous system to the central nervous system. Motor neurons or afferent neurons a euro transmit information from the central nervous system to the effector organs. Interneurons here, processes are limited to a local area in the brain or spinal cord. Based on the structure, neurons are again classified into the following. Bipolar neurons a euro they have one dendrite and one axon multipolar neurons a euro they have three or more processes coming from the cell body. Generally, they have one axon and many dendrites. The dorsal roots leave the dorsal horn and dorsolateral white matter, coalesce into two bundles and enter the dorsal root ganglion, DRG, in the intervertebral foramen. Immediately distal to the ganglion, the dorsal and ventral roots unite and form a trunk. There are supporting cells in the form of neuroglia that help remove the debris, give physical support along with providing electrical insulation. The endonuria with their enclosed nerve fibers are bundled into groups called nerve fascicles, each fascicle within its own protective sheath called a perineurium. In sufficiently large nerves multiple fascicles, each with its blood supply and fatty tissue, may be bundled within yet another sheath, the aponeurium. The two main categories are, sympathetic ganglia and parasympathetic ganglia. An example of parasympathetic ganglion is the ciliary ganglion, involved in pupil constriction and accommodation. The rate of the action potential or conduction limits the flow of information within the nervous system. It is not surprising, then, that various mechanisms have developed to optimize the propagation of action potentials along axons. Because action potential conduction requires passive and active flow of current, the rate of action potential propagation is determined by both of these phenomena.
One way of improving the passive current flow is to increase the diameter of ana axon, which effectively decreases the internal resistance to passive current flow. The consequent increase in action potential or conduction velocity I presumably explains why giant axons evolved in invertebrates such as squid, and why rapidly conducting axons in all animals tend to be larger than slowly conducting ones. The central nervous system CNS is responsible for integrating sensory information and responding accordingly. It consists of two main components. The spinal cord serves as a conduit for signals between the brain and the rest of the body. It also controls simple musculoskeletal reflexes without input from the brain. The abrena is responsible for integrating most sensory information and coordinating body function, both consciously and unconsciously. Complex functions such as thinking and feeling as well as regulation of homeostasis are attributable to different parts of the brain. The brain and spinal cord share some key anatomic features. Living nervous tissue has the consistency of jelly and requires special protection from physical damage.